So let's watch some of the closing statements from last night's debate and uh, grade them. We can't be a forward-looking party if we look to the past for our leadership. I'm a congressman, but also a father of a two-year-old and an infant. When I'm not changing diapers, I'm changing Washington. Most of the time, the diapers smell better. <laughs> I went to Congress at 31, and I found a Washington that doesn't work for people like you and me. It's made of the rich and the disconnected. I was the first in my family to go to college and have student loan debt. And so I have led the effort to elect the next generation of members of Congress. And we have a moment to seize. This is a can-do generation. This is the generation that will end climate chaos. This is the generation that will solve student loan debt. And this is the generation that will say enough is enough and end gun violence. This generation demands bold solutions. That's why I'm running for president. Congressman, thank you. Ms. Williamson, 45 yeah. seconds to your closing I'm statement. sorry we haven't talked more tonight about how we're going to beat Donald Trump. I have an idea about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not going to be beaten just by insider politics talk. He's not going to be beaten just by somebody who has plans. He's going to be beaten by somebody who has an idea what this man has done. This man has reached into the psyche of the American people, and he has harnessed fear for political purposes. So, Mr. President, if you're listening, I want you to hear me, please. You have harnessed fear for political purposes, and only love can cast that out. So I, sir, I have a feeling you know what you're doing. I'm going to harness love for political purposes. I will meet you on that field, and sir, love will win. Right. The floor for 45 seconds. Women in, America, women in America are on fire. We've marched, we've organized, we've run for office, and we've won. But our rights are under attack like never before by President Trump and the Republicans who want to repeal Roe v. Wade, which is why I went to the front lines in Georgia to fight for them. As president, I will take on the fights that no one else will. I stood up to the Pentagon and repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I've stood up to the banks and voted against the bailout twice. I've stood up to Trump more than any other senator in the U.S. Senate, and I have the most comprehensive approach for getting money out of politics with publicly funded elections to deal with political corruption. Now is not the time to play it safe. Now is not the time to be afraid of first. We need a president who will take on the big challenges, even if she stands alone. Join me in fighting for this. Senator Gillibrand, thank you. Mr. Yang, you have 45 seconds for your closing. First, I want to thank everyone who put me on this stage tonight. I am proof that our democracy still works. Democrats and Americans around the country have one question for their nominee, and that is who can beat Donald Trump in 2020? That is the right question. And the right candidate to beat Donald Trump will be solving the problems that got Donald Trump elected and will have a vision of a trickle-up economy that is already drawing thousands of disaffected Trump voters, conservatives, independents, and libertarians, as well as Democrats and progressives. I am that candidate. I can build a much broader coalition to beat Donald Trump. It is not left. It is not right. It is forward. And that is where I'll take the country in 2020. Mr. Yang, thank you. A second to close here. I suspect people all over the country who are watching this debate are saying, these are good people, they have great ideas. But how come nothing really changes? How come for the last 45 years wages have been stagnant for the middle class? How come we have the highest rate of childhood poverty? How come 45 million people still have student debt? How come three people own more wealth than the bottom half of America? And here is the answer. Nothing will change unless we have the guts to take on Wall Street, the insurance industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the military industrial complex, and the fossil fuel industry. If we don't have the guts to take them on, we'll continue to have plans, we'll continue to have talk, and the rich will get richer, and everybody else will be struggling. Thank you, Senator. We'll hear from Vice President Biden. Sir, you have 45 seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm ready to lead this country because I think it's important we restore the soul of this nation. This president has ripped it out. It's the only president in our history who has equated racist and, 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 and white supremacist with ordinary and decent people. He's the only president who has act engaged and embraced dictators and thumbed her nose at, at our allies. 
I'm secondly running for president because I think we have to restore the backbone of America, the poor and hardworking middle class people. You can't do that without replacing them with the dignity they once had. Lastly, we've got to unite the United States of America as much as anybody says we can. If we do, there's not a single thing the American people can't do. This is the United States of America. We can do anything if we're together, together. So God bless you all and may God protect our troops. <laughs> oh, the Biden fucking flailing doesn't know where he's going, and he just <laughs> may God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. <laughs> Come on, dude. Uh... <laughs> oh man. All right, let's let's give the grades here. Um, and Biden gets an F. It was just so embarrassing and bad and hokey. I'm I'm running to restore the soul of our nation. In other words, you have nothing of substance to say, so you're just gonna say some cheesy bullshit that you hope will make people just shut their minds off and go, I don't know, I guess Biden. Um, and then he just randomly threw in the words racist and white supremacist. Like, I don't even get the context of where he said he's like, this is the only president who's, I don't even know what he said, replaced racists and white supremacists with something. It He was barely coherent there. I'm not kidding. Go back and watch that a few times over. It's like he's just stumbling over his words and shit. Um, and then he talks about how Trump embraces dictators. Dude, you were vice president, and it's not like Obama, you know, untangled our fucking relationship with Saudi Arabia. I mean, give me a break. Stop with this shitty, low-brow, low-level attacks of, like, embraces dictators. Fucking all U.S. presidents embrace dictators. We have our favorite puppet dictators, and we have dictators we don't like who don't bend the knee to our corporations and our empire. Okay, um, so Biden gets an F. Swalwell gets a D. He's just too corny, and he's too over-practiced, and he talks about bold ideas, but he has none. He, I like when he said, uh, I spend time uh, changing diapers, and sometimes diapers smell better than Washington. Okay, bro. <laughs> so, D for him. Marianne Williamson gets a D with her shitty fucking... <laughs> I'm all about love, and this president... Is all about hate. Mr. President, I'll meet you on that battlefield after I drop more acid. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, Kirsten Gillibrand gets a C because she started out so corny. She started with, and I'm not kidding here, quote, women in America are on fire. What? <laughs> you better get the hose then. What the fuck? The women in America are on fire. Okay, that's strange. And the only reason she gets a C is because at the end she saved it by talking about some policies like the bank bailout, for example. And she talks about how she was against that. Um, Yang, sad. He gets a C. Come on, dude. You're supposed to be like a non-politician without platitudes and cliches and nonsense things to say. And you said, Pfft. Me, bro, look, we got to beat Trump, okay? That's the most important thing. Actually, no, the most important thing is getting policies implemented to fix this country. Um, Trump is a problem, but he also only is in power because the system was broken to begin with. So it's not like you get rid of Trump and everything's hunky-dory. So he does the whole beat Trump thing, and then he goes, I don't want to go left. I don't want to go right. I want to go forward. Ugh, come on, bro. What are you doing? Um, and then, of course, Bernie gets an A+. Plus. He knocked it out of the park. That was Bernie's best moment all night, was that. Because he just laid it out there. He was like, listen, all these people are nice. But ask yourself, elections come and go and politicians come and go. Why does nothing change? Why does nothing change? Because they're not serious about a political revolution. They're not serious about taking on the powerful special interests like Wall Street and the military industrial complex and the fossil fuel industry. I am going to take them on. It's almost like it was almost like a who we kidding. You know what to do. Yes, we do, Bernie. Yes, we do.